Hoppadays and Thoreau. Uh -huh. Welcome to Mariana Stories. I'm Catherine Perry, and this is where we chat with ordinary people with extraordinary stories in our community. Our guest today is kind of known as the go-to guy when it comes to caves in Saipan, Fred Camacho. Buenas, Fred. Buenas. Um, I've also sort of I've also been uh, baptized by the name Cave Master by a seven-year-old, so I like that title. Well. Cave Master or Cave Man? <laughs> cave Master. <laughs> a seven-year-old. You're the Cave Master. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I, I like I, that name. I think that fits because what I've noticed is that even historians that have lived here for a long time, PhDs coming from off island to do some kind of research about our history, like everybody says, you got to talk to Fred. Well. I thank them for that one, but I don't know. <laughs> you know it's true. <laughs> Somewhat, yes. I don't really want to take all the credit. I mean, I've uh, been guided by a lot of people as well. And, you know. Uh, How did you come to be so interested in caves? I wanted to do something in, mm, extraordinary so I could be interviewed by <laughs> Kathy <Captain> Perry. <laughs> no. 40 years in the future. Wow, that's well, a vision. Okay. <laughs> been working at it okay uh let's see you know i used to uh brag that i visited uh i wanted to find at least 100 caves on island and i've accomplished that goal and now in the process or probably have reached over 100 uh, another 100 so 200 plus caves Saipan alone uh so yes call me the cave guy the cave master the cave man yes <laughs> It will stick. This island is too small. <laughs> Can I get away from uh, being named something? You do something out of the ordinary. Definitely. And you get a title. Yeah. <laughs> something. You know, I think I think that a lot of people, unless they're involved in World War II history or geology, I think a lot of people who live here don't realize there's over 200 caves here. Can if, you tell us yeah. what's out there? If not more, there are. Uh, there are tunnels. There are caves, big, small caves, big caves, large caves. Um, I mean, there's, there's literally, the island is filled, I mean, holes. <laughs> Sorry, not filled, but it's got holes everywhere. <laughs> it's filled with caves. That are empty. <laughs> there are caves that are filled too. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I've been asked, you know, Where's the nearest cave? And I just point in one direction. There's, you know, there's one right there. And it's like, no way. It's like one right behind us. Uh, I can take you to a cave. You know, drop me anywhere. I can take you to a cave within uh, 10 minutes. Wait, so how come, how come the <laughs> average person can't, like, doesn't see them? Some of them are hidden. Some of them have been ignored for many years. And some of them are still sealed uh, ordinary person if you don't venture you know out of your comfort zone kind of thing you won't find these things okay. uh, and uh, you know you basically all you have to do is park your car somewhere and walk and look distant a minute you can find one if you know where to park you can walk for hours inside up the hill at the Pocha and uh, you may not find a cave but if you know what you're looking for you're just hiding behind a rock hiding behind a tree really sometimes it's just a hole in the ground like yesterday I mean the other day it's like it's just a hole in the ground and then you go in and it just opens up like really what is it about caves that made you first of all decide like I think I want to try to visit a hundred caves. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. well, now I'm at 200. And <laughs> what is it about it that fascinates you? Cave itself, and then I'm, I can ask you the same question. What is it, you know, is it the mystery behind the treasures that is kind of like hidden in there? I mean, this, the cave itself is a treasure. Um, when you find it, you know, some people it's like, Sometimes you cannot stop hearing the, oh my God, oh my God, what? Yeah. There's always that reaction. And um, yes, there's that mystery. There's that curiosity and danger that kind of like 
puts me in that situation where I kind of meet the two and just kind of just walk walk into that situation. Um, it's it's there. It's there for the finding. It's there for the, for anybody to kind of like uh, look for it, um, discover on your own if you want. Um, but the mystery, yes, sometimes there's that spiritual sense, sometimes there's that uh, danger, sometimes there's that feeling that people get in, even I get it, you know, what is it in this cave? And I, I'd be sitting in there and I'm going, okay, I need to put science and, and uh, mystery together and kind of solve that mm -hmm. problem or kind of put them together. And yes, breathing in what I call cave dust um, has its has its problems. You may be asthmatic and not know it. You may be breathing in fungus, and and you're allergic to it. Uh, some people just have cave lungs. Um, cave some, lungs meaning they have an ability to they have an ability to, it a little bit. Yeah. Have and, you ever gotten sick from caving? I've always watched myself days after or even you know hours after I come out of the cave to see if I feel something funny but I I've, I've had to wait inside a cave or right outside a cave when somebody has literally uh, fallen asleep inside the cave because they're either exhausted tired uh, or something happens mm -hmm. I've held on to people on, on a rope because on their way up from, you know, repelling, they couldn't do it anymore. They ran out of energy. They're, they're done. They need to rest. And I'm there holding on to the rope and talking to them or giving them a, you know, a few minutes to, to uh, regain their strength or just wake up. But yeah, it's happened at least three times already where I'm helping somebody come up from a from a deeper cave and they gave up. <laughs> like, I need to rest. It's too hard. They're sweating, they're hot, they're running out of breath. Have you personally ever felt in danger when you were caving? Uh, yes. Those were the days when I would walk around and uh, didn't have a flashlight. I had a camera. <laughs> Well, that's kind of something. I didn't At least you could document the fact you didn't have a flashlight. Okay. I had a camera with me, and that was my only light, the flash. Okay, why did you do that? Because I wanted to see how far, how deep this cave was. And sure enough, I got to the point where about three feet in front of me was a 50, 70 foot drop. And. If it wasn't for that flash of that camera, because <laughs> I took the shot and the light did not hit bottom. Oh. And it's like, oh. okay, back up. <laughs> well, back that's up. a different kind of danger because you intentionally chose to put yourself in that danger. Like I said, yeah, yeah. with, you know, <laughs> going to, coming out of or at the side, there's that, that danger is there. and. Be careful. Go with somebody. At um, this moment, I'm actually in communication with somebody that is walking alone to a site that I basically said, don't go alone. And he decided to go. So why? I'm like on a, on a danger alert so, so because this person wants to go alone. Right now. Right now. In Marpee. Why did you tell them not to go alone? Because of the danger involved. Because if he doesn't know what he's getting himself into, uh, the the path going down is a, uh, I want to say dry, dusty clay that if you're not holding on, if the rope is there, you're somewhat safer, but if the rope is not there, you're walking down and on your way up you're gonna you're gonna have problems because one step and you'll sink your, your foot will go down oh. so you'll be you'll be on your stomach oh. climbing okay. up 
so the danger's there. And not only that, you will be uh, exposing unexploded ordnance while you do it. It's called a boom cave. A boom? It's called a boom cave. I mean, somebody nicknamed it the boom cave because of the uh, unex uh, unexploded ordnance that were basically pushed into dumped this in cave, there. dumped in. Yeah. Well, yeah, that would not be the first cave I would be visiting. No. But, you know, once you get down to the bottom, it just opens up into a huge chamber and you can spend literally uh, you know an hour two hours depending on how much exploring you want to do mm -hmm. inside this cave so i think most people are familiar with calabara cave yes calabara means skeleton because skeleton the or skull yes apparently you can kind of see the outline of a skull when mm -hmm. you look at the cave some people if you have that kind of artistic eye mm -hmm. And then there's petroglyphs there, ch Chamorro carvings on the rock. What are some of the other significant caves on Saipan? Other than the cave itself, um, you know, right up the hill is, uh, has been nicknamed the Oba Cave, the Xterra Cave, the, the Fallopy Cave. Uh, that's, that's a sight to be seen because of how it was built and where it was built and what it was used for kind of thing. Um, what was that's it used one. for? Because I was told that when my mom was an infant and they hid up here, it mm -hmm. was like someplace in this area, um, if I'm not mistaken. Fallopy or Oba, Xterra, whatever you want to call it, um, was used as a dugout uh, either by Okinawan or Chamorro Carolinian laborers. Uh, and was used as probably on a, you know ordnance storage and at one point it was also used as a field hospital oh. um, and uh, a lot of its contents have been removed already over the years it used to have a uh, I want to say like a cable cart that runs up the hill uh, through this cave system as well as a, a road bed that kind of goes alongside on top of Colorado and then to Galaidi I and mean, connects there was a road back there Japanese era uh, Japanese era yes um, that's you know uh, that's that's a uh, must kind of like a must see for for people that want to go to caves and tunnels is that the I, I had heard of a field hospital cave before is that the one that's on private property this one and what is your <clears throat> um, there are that? yeah there are a few if not uh, more than a few field caves out I mean uh, hospital caves out there uh, I think we have to remember that any any cave that can be used as uh, as a shelter can become whatever it's needed for Calabara was used as a field hospital at one point. Uh, really? This one was used as a field hospital. Um, I'm still looking for one in the, in the Matuis that's supposedly 40 feet underground. Uh, it's, it's sealed for sure. Uh, but uh, supposedly the, uh, the beds are still inside. The beds and and maybe um, skeletal remains are still down there. How do you know? Uh, people that talk. <laughs> and I don't want to like, name like names. stories. From stories that have been yes, stories? yes, 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 and uh, even stories that were passed down by uh, by uh, U.S. military themselves. They said, you know, there's there's a site over there that hasn't been disturbed, or they themselves sealed it. Yeah. Um, significant there's there's one that we unsealed uh, maybe two three years <clears throat> three years ago um, it's basically a foxhole or a, a rabbit hole that goes down about 10 feet goes in about 20 and then another 100 feet on the inside it just goes to the left about 100 feet and inside again it's, we were in the process of looking for human remains with the uh, Kwentai uh, organization out of Japan um, 
But it, it was empty. It was never used. Oh, okay. Uh, somehow it got sealed, but because it was never, uh, never used, the stalactites, pencil thin stalactites were still hanging yeah. all over the place. Yeah. And you literally have to kind of like, you know, maneuver yourself inside, try not to break it. And yep, on our way out, I said, do the same, try not to break something and dink. <laughs> you, know, you, broke you hit one and like, ah. <laughs> uh, it broke. So I want to leave it that way. Just keep it sealed. And how did you find that? How did you know where to look for that, Kate? I was actually, we were actually on a, on a, on a break, sitting on a rock. And I was talking to uh, Kurata San from Quintai. I said, it's, it's here, it's there. I mean, I pointed down and I said, this place may have a, a, a sealed cave. And, you know, I started moving dirt and leaves and twigs and whatever. And there's a rock there. And I said, maybe this one, you know, I pulled out a rock and there was a hole. So you just had an eye. But maybe you saw the boulder or something and you had a, a everything, hunch? Everything looked natural. Yeah. It's, a simple depression in the ground kind of gave me a, that hunch to, to say maybe there's something here. Wow. But yes, there were bones uh, not too far from this site. And, uh, you know, I picked up the, the boulder itself, huge rock, and there's that hole. Nobody could fit in. And I said, uh, can I borrow some of this camera? So I tied the camera to a string, <laughs> set it on a timer, send it down, and it flashed. And it took a shot of the, uh, the art shape. You can tell it's man-made, wow. art shape uh, cutting on the cave. And it, the, the, the light did not hit the end. So we're send another, send another shot down, and then, sure enough. Yeah. And we started <laughs> removing rocks, <laughs> digging until uh, until we uh, got a size big enough for the smallest member of the team <laughs> to go in. And uh, we tied her to a rope. I said, "Okay, you're going in, but you know, not without this rope yeah, kind of yeah. thing." She got down. She she uh, touched bottom, and then she walked in. And she goes, it keeps going. And I said, okay, okay, we got something here. Is it something worth looking at? I said, yes, definitely. But she didn't want to be down there alone. Yeah. Uh, Yukari was her name. It is her name. Yeah. So we call it the Yukari. Because <laughs> <laughs> she was the first one yeah. to go in. Uh, are there places where, um, like talking about uh, safety, right? Where there's like poisonous gas or what do they call it? Methane. Uh, methane gas. Uh, it's been said. Siphon? Yeah, it's been said that uh, Falingun Hanum, also known as the Mermaid Cave in the uh, San Juan area. That's up in Marpi, correct? Uh, I don't know if you want to still want to call it Marpi, but yes, it's in the San Juan, more towards Telefofu, okay. uh, the shooting range area. Okay. Uh, there are multiple chambers inside that cave, also known as the Thousand Man Cave. As what? The, uh, it's the Thousand Man Cave. Oh, why? Because you can fit over a thousand people in there. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Very you know. friendly people. Uh, <laughs> and, and water would literally uh, uh, go down this cave and it emptied, empty out uh, the ocean uh, further further east. Um, and that's why Falingun Hanum, the cave of the disappearing water, is what it is. Uh, people that have gone down uh, the depths uh, have come up saying uh, it's it's bad air down there. Oh. And I believe it. I mean, I'm not about to 
you know, going down. It's like, okay, tell me what you, <laughs> tell me what you see. <laughs> like, holes, <laughs> caves, stalactites, stalactites, you know, stalagmites, stalactites. Uh, very few artifacts, human remains. Yeah. It's not really there. I think it's been cleaned out or nobody really died in there. Um, it opens up into multiple chambers inside. I mean, you go into a, a huge hole and then you enter other holes inside the cave. So it's a okay. cave inside a cave. It's inside a network. Cave. Yeah. Good place like to get lost. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> not this one. <laughs> not you. Yeah, you can get Maybe tired in there. Um, yeah, people have tied strings just to make sure they don't get uh, lost. And there's, there's only one place where I kind of wanted to do that only because uh, we had to go through narrow, uh, narrow passages uh -huh. that it kind of goes left and right, <laughs> like, and in the dark. And of yeah. course, you know, you have all your safety lights, your backup lights, and whatever else you need. But yeah, at, at that point, I said that I think this is where we need. <laughs> <laughs> string mm -hmm. to kind because of, I was trying to connect uh, two caves. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't. I couldn't connect it from this side. Somehow, somehow we got blocked. But we went down on this one and then tried to connect it from the other side. And Were you still, successful? Oh. no, no. I think it got sealed somewhere in there. That was one of the things I wanted to to bring up because. It's right next to um, the ordnance detonation site. And every time they detonate those bombs uh, and unexploded ordnance up there, it shakes these places. Um, possibly breaking off some of the stalactites or loosening some of the rocks up there. And not some place you want to be at when they're detonating bombs. Mm -hmm. If I can feel the shake four miles away while they're detonating, you know, bombs, imagine what things feel like inside caves. Um, I've approached a congressman to see if there's something that can be done with the detonation other than detonating it there because I want to say Grotto is being jeopardized. Boulders have fallen down and the grotto site. In your lifetime? In my lifetime, yeah. Um, oh. And um, the multi-million dollar uh, site there that has to be protected and if one day they detonate and that cave system collapses we're going to lose our number one dive spot. Yes, it's been yeah. rated at number one dive spot on, mm -hmm. not only here, but worldwide. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I am no detonation bomb expert, but <laughs> let them figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on a ship, <laughs> send it out there. I don't know. But yeah. The you mentioned uh, artifacts and human remains. What is the proper thing to do when you come across those in a cave? With human remains, uh, I my first contact would be uh, the uh, Japanese organization that, that comes on a regular basis to collect these bones. Uh, the government side agency uh, just came out of Tinian with, I want to say, 18 remains that were discovered recently over there. Um, but they will be my first contact. Uh, not like HPO or uh, HPO. Somehow. I mean, for the average person, not for the cave master, but <laughs> like for average cat. Like, what? Or she? Uh, HPO. I have notified them of uh, remains uh, here and there, and somehow that's not a priority unless there's something big that needs to happen on that site. Okay. Um, you know, I walked into HPO and say, "What? Did you find some more, <laughs> more caves or more remains?" I go, "No, I'm just here to read some, <laughs> some articles, <laughs> the research, the research." Yeah. Yes. Um, and how about artifacts like sling stones or World War II um, artifacts, especially? 
uh, we do have some laws out there I think it was 13 something I can't remember the exact number of the law that these artifacts are not supposed to be removed or disturbed <laughs> but it's happening it's happening um, I've yeah, I myself have removed uh, uh, grenades or bullets because I know those things can become a problem for younger kids that will play with them. I mean, I've, I've seen a child holding on to a bazooka walking across a field. <laughs> and I go, hey, where are you going with that? It's like, I'm going to show it to my dad. <laughs> like, uh, maybe that's not a good idea. Can you put it down? And he just drops it like, oh, God. <laughs> Uh, sling stones it's everywhere pottery shards it's everywhere uh, you walk the path in Marpi a young nine-year-old boy called an area the Chamorro village it just happens to be last command post which is not really the last command post <laughs> right which is not the last command post but that's what we call <laughs> that's it that's what we call it uh, he'd be walking around and he'd find sling stones and he'd find uh, ats and possibly other artifacts that are there. Um, when they were pushing, making the, the walkway over there, they were literally pushing aside uh, a lot of artifacts because that entire area was an uh, ancient village. Um, they don't. In caves, a lot of them have been emptied out. I believe my grandparents, my uncles, my aunties all have like uh, cooking pots from the military, <laughs> cauldrons <laughs> of many sizes that came out of, of these sites um, that will last forever. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, as a young boy, I mean, I'm just scraping off burnt marks or, you know, after, after they're cooking and and every now and then I find these cooking pots inside caves uh, right now even a simple uh, ceramic Japanese ceramic that's inside a cave they usually have some designs on it and yeah pictures take a picture just leave it behind Gold teeth. Gold teeth. Gold teeth. Yeah. Where did that come from? Inside a cave. Would They're that still have there. been Japanese or American or? No. Most likely Japanese. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, American remains. JPAC now DPAA. Uh, wait, wait. What is JPAC and DPAA? DPA. <laughs> DPA. DPA is, is the Department of POW and MIA um, something association agency, accounting agency. They're the ones responsible f for uh, bringing back uh, remains or whatnot uh, from wars like here. DPAA, I mean, JPAC is the old name for it. Department of POW and Accounting Agency. Mm -hmm. Are there any any reports of um, uh, U.S. remains? They'll come out and and exhume, pick up the remains, and then send it back in for analysis, and then notify the family members who are still. They have a list mm -hmm. of uh, POWs that are missing, MIAs. Uh, that out here in the Pacific, uh, as well as worldwide, I guess. Um, and yeah, at one point I was told that there are no more uh, U.S. remains right here on Saipan yet. We've dug up <laughs> at least five, and one right down here underneath the IPI. I'm still waiting to figure out who this U.S. soldier is because I haven't seen the report on that one. Mm -hmm. Those uh, details have been extracted 
so that they can notify the family mm. first. Make sure it's the soldier that belongs to that family. You have Heart said attacks. that um, the number one thing you, you want people to understand or to consider when it comes to visiting caves, looking for caves, is to respect the area or respect respect the yeah, yeah the cave and what's going on there can you elaborate on that um i have been in in some places where i've seen graffiti inside caves up here in navy hill in marpy uh places in marpy and i've seen uh fake petroglyphs <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I saw those too. I was like, that wasn't here 10 years ago. Let me show you the real one. I mean, I, you know, I've seen, you know, so-so was here, I love whatever, you know. Uh, and then that's not nice. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's yeah. not nice. But when you go to some tunnels and you'll see like uh, survey markers that were done right after the war because they had to somehow figure out what all these things were. Um, they were literally uh, spray painting numbers on the tunnel wall so that they know exactly where things mm -hmm. were uh, for their research or for their whatever it is, their survey. Yeah. Um, those things I can understand, but when you go in there with just spray paint and just spray the walls you don't know what you're spraying over you know could be something worth looking years from now or somebody um, maybe studying that later on uh, and they'll miss it because it's covered with uh, spray paint uh, etchings on the walls um, there's one uh, written with a pencil in one of the caves in Marpi. It's uh, Japanese characters. I can't tell you if it's kanji or mm -hmm. the other. And supposedly it got translated and they found the family uh, somehow whoever's related to this person. And sad thing is that they didn't want anything to do with that history that's what i was told <laughs> so this is a cave that many people may have actually just walked by here at sugar king park in Yerapan, like myself mm -hmm. and not even realized that it was there um at one point it literally had i mean you can still see the steps going up to some of these sites um uh, but the steps have been ruined over the years and they just kind of left it at that. So were these steps put here by the Japanese or the Germans? Um, or do we know? I want to say some of the steps were put in by the Germans, but it's not these. Okay. Um, uh, somehow this this steps over here was made for uh, tourists at one point that will come and 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 kind of pay homage or whatever to to their debt. Mm -hmm. Let's check out this view here. As you can see, the cinder blocks are fairly recent. If you hear a, a crash, it's just me falling down. No panic. <laughs> okay. Did you know hey, that these by steps... By the way, where does this go? Uh, where's that one go? Which one? There's steps that go up there. Have you oh, been up there? Uh, at one point it led to the top. Top oh, okay. of this hill. Where, where I believe Nimitz or Fritz built his house. Uh, no way. Up, up here, yeah. Uh, this was back in uh, German era, 
1901, 1902, yeah, 1901, somewhere there, yeah. somewhere there. Uh, okay. So he had his house up here. And then, of course, the German administration had their headquarters down below. Right. And as you can see, we're walking right up to the mouth of the cave. So, watch your step. Okay, thanks. Well, there you are. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why, like, if you were watching your step here, where it's quite a little bit treacherous, you may not have even noticed this. Yes, and at one point it was covered with uh, ferns and other vegetation. Uh, it was just hanging down and just covering the whole thing. So what do we know about this cave? We don't know much because it was never really surveyed. Uh, I'm not even sure if HBO has any type of documents that that uh, talks about this uh, this cave, but you can tell it was used by for a hideout uh, based on the artifacts that are on the ground. I believe we found some pens in there as well as other types of artifacts. There's also a some tents you said pen. Oh. pen. Um, wow. How deep is it? It goes in, I want to say a good uh, 75 feet to the end and then it chambers up. Uh, there's another chamber up on top here, another 30 feet that way. And then a small passageway that's already blocked. I want to say that one kind of connects it to the other side of the, the uh, hill over there. Uh, I tried to look for a connection on that side both both uh, areas have been blocked off so i cannot connect the two two holes but yeah it goes in it flattens out somewhere i mean there's areas there where people can literally lay down and and sleep and at one point it was being used by a homeless person really yes because i've uh, at one point i've walked in and i found uh, uh, a bag of some sort with uh, blankets and and other uh, food items that were just kind of left there. Uh, when I first found out about it, I mean, I came out kind of looking to see if the the person is still here because I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't want to disturb them. Yeah. I mean, something about it. So up till today, this cave is still being being used for one reason or another uh, it's not just for uh, for visitors it's not just for tourists it's not just for for cave explorers like myself uh, but uh, I mean if it was raining up I'd be in there myself just as a shelter mm. just hide up um, you can be walking around You'll find concrete structures here and there. You'll possibly find the uh, foundations for the German house up above. I really can't tell you exactly where it is up there, but you know you can spend some time walking around here, and you'll probably find something else that that uh, um, I haven't seen myself. Possibly even another cave, tuck somewhere. <laughs> wow! Right here at Sugar King Park. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And if you're thirsty, coconuts are waiting for you. <laughs> right there. Well, Fred, I really want to thank you for sharing with us today. Oh, thank you for the interview. And Good for time. the work that you do to help uh, share the knowledge of our history and our culture. Any final thoughts before we go? There's still a lot out there to, to learn. Still a lot, there, a lot of caves and sites out there to, to see some places to me are worth more than some of the sites that are ready for visitors or prep for visitors um, you know I've taken archaeologists I've taken uh, politicians lawyers <laughs> out and about and yeah they themselves are still amazed that Saipan still has these treasures 
just within walking distance from one area uh, and it's it's worth more than say you know like visitor sites command post is nice last command post is nice but have you ever been to the last command post <laughs> that's a different story today that's still fortified with wasps bees oh, <laughs> yes so there's the danger is there be careful go with somebody um, you know I've taken a seven-year-old uh, out into and on, and on some of my hikes I've taken a 70 year old and they both same or you know anywhere they they, they, they look at it and I, I kind of see it from the 70 year old eyes and I see it from a 70 year old eye also mm -hmm. and that's that says something you learn something from from that and it's not just me showing them it's also them telling me what what they see because they may have the answer that I don't have an answer for. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you're the expert, but you're still learning. I'm still learning. <laughs> and I want to keep learning. And I want to keep finding. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> We've been chatting today with Fred Camacho, known as the cave guy, the cave expert, or the cave master, master. here in Saipan. This has been Mariana's Stories. We'll see you next month. Thank you.